Coming up now on 739, uh, word up. I think it's funny. Lots of words have been said on this show as we begin uh, our final Lafayette Live featuring Lafayette City Parish President uh, Joey Durrell. And, of course, Lafayette Live will continue. It will move to Wednesday mornings at 638 a.m. and we'll be uh, able to showcase uh, all of our Lafayette City Parish Council uh, people, and those are the folks that vote. Those are the folks that end up uh, making the decisions. So we'll be hearing on them, with from them, that is, on the Wednesday mornings following uh, the Tuesday night council meetings. But it is hard to believe that this day has come. Uh, Lafayette City Parish President Joey Durrell joining Carol and I in studio this morning. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is hard to believe that we are 12 years down the road um, and it, it's I I'm really having tr- trouble struggling with the time. I am too. Uh, you know, I, I've, I've told many people I sure hope the next 12 or 20 or so don't go by nearly as fast. <laughs> oh, I think I'm going to start watching the clock. <laughs> <laughs> so this is this has been lightning speed. It has been lightning speed. Um, as we reflect on on this particular show, Lafayette Live, when we were first approached. Uh, by Mike Grimsley, uh, our general manager and uh, now a regional vice president. And he came to you and talked to you about the show. What were your initial thoughts, Joey? You, well, if you were there, you were there. It was a night I'll never forget it. Walking <laughs> into the Cajun Dome, I believe, and uh, you and Mike approached me about doing a show. Uh, this was in January. It was for the Chamber of Commerce's uh, annual banquet mm-hmm. uh, where the new new person was coming in. And... Um, and y'all came and said, you know, the governor, Governor um, Foster, Foster mm-hmm. would do a show. Governor Blanco is not going to do this show. We have some time to fill. Would you be interested in doing a show on Thursday mornings? Mm-hmm. I said, sure, I guess so. And Mike started dancing. And, yeah, yeah. Yep. And I said, wait, 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 wait a second. Maybe maybe I better rethink this a little bit. You're, you're way too excited. <laughs> way too happy. Way, way too, too happy. happy. <laughs> and so, um, Media person starts dancing around. You start wondering. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that was that was too quick. And so, um, but I went back, you know, I, I talked to Dee and I said, what do you think? You know, what do you, and he, oh, it'd be good. So, you know, we put it together. A couple of months later, we started. Mm-hmm. So it's been almost a full 12 years. It has all been almost a full 12 years. The biggest thing we wanted was to make sure that those phone lines would be open and that no phone calls would, would be screened ever. Right. And we were so excited when you agreed to that because that's what the whole point was, to have transparency and to have anybody be able to call up and say, hey, this is my issue or this is what I've always been wondering about or I don't like this or I do like this. So in your own personal life, what was it like to deal with in the beginning of Lafayette Life? Well, I'm glad you didn't ask my wife that question. (laughs) Miss Lynn, we love you. (laughs) Um. It was it was scary, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, first of all, I mean, I came to realize real quick that people thought that when you got elected, they plugged something into the side of your neck mm-hmm. and downloaded the name of every coolie and every street and every <laughs> stream and every road in Lafayette. And if you only knew they it. could, right? Yeah, and and you know, I didn't know any more than anybody else. You know, I mean, this this whole world is is meant for average people to get in and serve their time and get out. Sure. And uh, and that's the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it it is it, and. Um, but that's, and that's why, you know, anybody can run for these jobs. I mean, we've seen that we, with the president of the United States. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, so, um, anyway, it's, um, it was, it was pretty scary at first. And, uh, but I, I, I ran and I said, this government isn't anybody's private club. I've, I've, that's been my, I've said that for 12 years. It's nobody's private club. And I felt being accessible and, um, transparent, as you said, I, mm-hmm. you know, is, was not 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 a good thing. It was a necessary and a um, required thing. Mm-hmm. Do you? How did you feel? I'm sure there were days when you probably left the show thinking, "I wish I would have said more." Oh and, no. And or I no. wish I would have said less. No. Yeah. No, I said that. <laughs> that I thought often. Um, you know, but I, you know, I have operated where I've rarely gone and given a speech prepared. Mm-hmm. Because I've always felt it's all better coming from the heart. Mm-hmm. I, I've just have, and, I, and that's what I, that's why I kind of I like. I mean, you get to me, you're better, you're more more likely to get the truth if it's spur of the moment mm-hmm. than than giving somebody. We'll send you all the questions today, and you'll you can answer them tomorrow. Answer them tomorrow, you yeah. Know, then you can prepare and you can bounce them off of people and you can mm-hmm. get all the words right. And so you know that was risky for me, and um, <clears throat> and I knew it, and uh, I knew that 
and I did say things that I wish I could have said a little bit different, but that wouldn't have been me <laughs> mm-hmm. necessarily, you know, and it wouldn't have, uh, because it wouldn't you have gave been yourself, honest. You gave yourself to the people who were listening. I right. mean, you just put it out there, right. you know, and so people either loved it or hated it or criticized it or were in the middle of it or applauded it and a little bit of everything. But they always got the truth as I saw it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Never, never anything different. And not censored. No. You know, um, yeah. let me ask you, too, Mr. Durrell. Uh, this is, our, of course, our, our final Lafayette Live with Lafayette City Parish President uh, Joey Durrell. We will proceed with Lafayette Live. It'll move to Wednesday mornings at 638 with our council members. I am curious from your perspective, sir. Um, there were so many big issues that were so hotly debated on this show whether it was uh, the speed vans and the red light cameras or fiber to the home. Um, there were some times where we had some very interesting conversations and people got, well, people are passionate, just mm-hmm. like all of the rest of us in this room. People are very passionate. Yeah. And it it could get very hot in this room in terms of, of how people's feelings and emotions were coming mm-hmm. out. Mm-hmm. Um, was there ever a time that you thought, I need to quit, I need to quit doing this show? Oh, yeah. Every uh, week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right every, after the yeah. show. When every Lynn Thursday, said, yeah. Back off. <laughs> well, you know, I questioned it a couple of times, I guess, but I still tell you, Bernie, I have always felt this was one of the best things that we did mm-hmm. because it made us transparent. It made us accessible. Um, it showed, like I said, that we had we had nothing to um we weren't trying to hide anything. I mean, mm-hmm. I would, we would never have done a show with outscreening calls if I was afraid of a question. Right. And right. Um, so, you know, while, while those things kind of go through your mind about the possibility of of not doing it, mm-hmm. it for me, it was never a serious it's, that's just not in your the, personality. The parish president wanted to stop at one point, but the mayor said keep doing it. So we, we had that <laughs> argument. <clears throat> All right. As uh, as we're looking towards 2016, um, wh- what advice would you have for the new council members, uh, the folks that are returning as well, and this new administration? To think really hard about consequences. You know, we have a we have, according to the bond attorneys that we've used for the years that I've been in office, we have the most complex government local government in the state of Louisiana, mm-hmm. not just because of the complexity of running any government, mm-hmm. but we have our own utility system and we, we, we generate power, you know, and then we have this sort of kind of consolidated government. And so what I, I met with some of the newly elected people and I told them, I said, you know, I said, you you have to answer to multiple masters yeah. and it's, um it's difficult. I said, you're going to, you're going to get lobbied the way I did. And I said, by the way, I started off the conversation. I heard everything, a hundred percent of everything y'all heard during this last election. I heard it twelve years ago. Mm-hmm. We spend money in Lafayette. We should get some of those taxes. We do this. We should get this. You know, and I heard it all. I said, so there's nothing y'all heard that I didn't hear twelve years ago. <laughs> I said, and I said, every mayor in the small towns in Lafayette Parish have lobbied me to spend parish dollars in those towns because they spend those dollars. Sure, those pay, they, they pay those taxes. And I said, and there's two philosophies, but I said, when I came in, I was told that for all practical purposes for the last 30 years, all available parish dollars have been spent in the unincorporated area. I said, we have done the same thing for 12 years. For all practical purposes, I mean, I'm sure there's a minor exception here and there. For all practical purposes, we have spent all available parish tax dollars on drainage and roads and bridges in the unincorporated area. So I said, if you all decide you're going to go do a project inside one of those towns, don't forget, you're doing it at the expense of the unincorporated area. Mm-hmm. And I said, and when you do it in that town, what do you tell the other mayors? That's right. And in fact, if you do it in those towns, what do you tell the citizens of the city of Lafayette who pay about 60% of those taxes? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I said, and the irony is the people in the unincorporated area will always think you don't do enough for them, that you don't, you know, you'll, you'll hear that. I mean, most people, I think, are reasonable. Mm-hmm. But the fact of the matter is the People in the unincorporated area contribute a, into the pot of drainage money and bridge money and road money about 30% of the taxes, but they get 100% of it spent in the unincorporated area. Now, the other theory would be spend it in the small towns, spend it in Lafayette, and starve them into annexing into the cities. But if, they, if you do that, and I, that was never my approach, mm-hmm. but if you did that, you're going to put more burden on the cities than they can handle. Yeah. They're not going to, there's, there's not enough tax dollars to do that. So it's a diff, they, they, it's a difficult position to where 
not just two hats, <clears throat> because as the mayor, you are the mayor of Lafayette, and you have a responsibility. And we have Guy Carnegie sitting right here, the parish president of St. Martin Parish. I have always felt a strong responsibility to the surrounding parishes, and but the, I don't have any authority in, in St. Martin Parish. Mm-hmm. My approach has been, and for, for Lafayette Parish and for the surrounding parishes, the city of Lafayette has got to be very, very strong mm-hmm. because I believe we are the engine that drives the economy here. Mm-hmm. We're all they're the wheels, they're the parts, they're the pieces. That, you know, we're all we're all in it together. But this this with the university, the medical center, the retail center, we are the engine that drives the economy in this area. So where I had a responsibility and where I had ability was in the city and the parish of Lafayette. And the better better, better job we did here, the more it helped Guy and St. Martin Parish and, and Iberia Parish and others. So um, it's this this job is not just wearing two hats. It's answering to multiple masters, and it is impossible. It's impossible to answer to multiple masters and do a good job or at least have the perception of doing a good job for everybody because you've got to make choices. When there was a, just a parish president and a parish council, they they focused on the unincorporated area. Mm-hmm. They knew that there was even the even the parish councilmen that were elected, like Conrad Como and uh, Daryl Schwest and Kathy Ashworth and, uh, and all those that were inside the city of Lafayette. They knew their responsibility was to the unincorporated area. Mm-hmm. And so now you have councilmen that have to run in the small towns, run in the unincorporated area, and run in the city of Lafayette. And they're going to have to make choices that are going to put them at odds. With, with others, others. Mm-hmm. and it's 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 a very difficult position to be in, and uh, and at some point you've got to make those decisions, and it's and it's was it's it going to be with somebody? Yeah, was it? That's true. I mean, <clears throat> you're not going to make everybody happy, but was it ever discussed to maybe distribute those funds on a per capita basis? No. No. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. The, 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 we've had all those discussions. I mean, I mean the parish dollars. Parish, parish yes. dollars. Yeah. Uh-huh. Of course. I mean, we've had all those discussions. Because I've had people who live in some of the small towns say, "Well, we're in the parish too. We should get some of the parish uh, and, dollars." And here's <laughs> and I had that conversation. Let me tell you <laughs> yeah. a conversation I had with one of the councilmen. I said, "Give me a number. Tell me what what would make you happy." Mm-hmm. They said, mm, "Give us 15 percent of the dollars we send back." I said, "Okay, so y'all contribute a whopping two hundred thousand dollars a year to drainage. So we're going to give you back thirty thousand dollars." That's not going to change anything in your town. And by the way, if we give you 30, we've got to give that town mm-hmm. 25 and that town 30 and this town 15. And by the way, Lafayette gets back a million. Now, the truth is the hundreds of thousands of dollars or whatever money we get back in Lafayette, the tens of thousands of dollars that you all get in the, in, the, in the towns is not going to change anybody's lives yeah. inside those cities. But collectively, we can do a pretty good project in the unincorporated area. And the people in the unincorporated area have to get from one town to the other town, shop in the different towns, um, we want guys, people to come here and shop in Lafayette instead of saying, I'm kidding. <laughs> and, uh, but, but, you know, we, but we, True, but they get a break on their taxes too. I mean, they're not paying city taxes and they're not paying, uh, people in the unincorporated areas aren't paying for, well, when they shop you know, in the city. city. Ta- well, they pay sales taxes, but that's a choice that they make. What I'm sure. saying is their well, at- property taxes and that sort of thing. Yeah, no, no, there's no doubt. And our property taxes primarily go to fire and police. You know, there's a little bit for uh, drainage, but the majority of it's for fire and police and it's a city. That's a city. Mm hmm. Two city services, but um, yeah. So it, those debates happen. But you know, when you start talking about, well, you know, we shop in Lafayette, so therefore we should get some of that money in our town. Well, what about the people in St. Martin Parish that shop in Broussard? Do they are they going to get some money back from Broussard? It's impractical, it's impossible, and it's illegal. So we got to quit that conversation. Just get quit get past that and start talking about reality. And um, and you know, the people who do shop in the various towns, no matter what town they're in, are using the infrastructure that those taxes pay and build. And the fact is, your um, the property taxes uh, parish-wide are not very, they're not very high, actually. We pay 87 mills in Lafayette Parish for everything. In, uh, no, factor out, factor out school board. I'm talking about just dedicated uh-huh. but to But I'm telling you, Carol, what government. I'm saying is, even in, with the school board, it's 87 mills. In, in in St. Tammany Parish, they pay 89 meals just to their school system. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a it's a huge difference. Yeah, and, and so you know, we are the lowest taxed parish and the lowest taxed city in the state that has a major city. Yay! In the parish. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> true. For us. And, that's, and, and look, like, it's like I had a friend of mine say, Joey, I'm okay with potholes. I'm okay with sitting in traffic. I pay enough taxes. I'm o- I, I would rather sit in traffic and sit and hit potholes 
than to pay money to fix it. Mm-hmm. And I get it. I understand that. Somebody you know? send the f- boys in the white coat for that guy. <laughs> well, but what I mean is, you know, b- but you just said, yay, because we're the lowest tax. You can't no. have it both ways, you know. And um, and Making so. Making a joke, Joey. No, no. But what I mean is, it's, <laughs> but that's a point. I mean, it's, you can't, you know. We are the lowest taxed, and we're and we're fortunate because we're the, one of the smallest parishes, so we don't have the yeah. the kind of infrastructure that we have to have that's as long and whatever. But oh, it's true. That's going to be our number one job for in the future. We've got to get the infrastructure. And if you if you look if you go back, I was looking at some historical things. I think your name was even in some of these books from the, <laughs> just a few years. Don't ago. tell them how far no, back not, it not goes. Too far. <laughs> but it was it was traffic. It was drainage. And 12 years from now, it will be traffic. It will a be drainage. drainage. Yep. It's going to be the same issues over That's and right. over and over again. Right. Mr. Cormier, do you do you agree with that? It seems like it is always the same issues. It's a continual fight. Yeah, it is. And and uh, you know, I've I've gotten to sit on the sidelines, so to speak, and mm-hmm. in a neighboring parish and watch this man operate over the last 12 years. Um, and it's just he's done an amazing job. And here he is on his last show, mm-hmm. still telling people what what, uh, what needs to happen for it to be fixed. And he's right. Both he and I are going to go home one day. Uh, he's going home a little earlier than I am. But and those problems are going to still you exist. You still have hair. Uh, well, there's not much of it left. But uh, yeah, but he and I were both six foot three when we got here. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. But he's done a remarkable job. And, and uh, yeah, I know he, we face the same problems. Just. His are much more broad in some senses than, than mine are because I'm such a, a rural parish, which means the bulk of my population live outside of any city limit. Mm-hmm. So um, and in his case, the bulk of his population by far live in some type of a city limit. So mm-hmm. we're com- kind of yeah. almost complete opposite. In many ways, makes yeah. your job is you don't have the tax base that we have. Right. Yet you still got to get people to move around. and You still got drainage issues no matter what, no how many people. No doubt. So. Um, your thoughts on working with Mr. Durrell? Well, you know, I think you know, I was trying to think about last night just what his legacy would be, and, and it's, it's you know I'll probably get to that, but you know some of the things that stick out to me was watching his initiatives um, move forward. The first thing being regionalism, I had got elected, I got elected in a special election uh, a year after after Joey did because uh, Scott Angel went on to work on for Governor Blanco, mm-hmm. and um, and my first meeting um, probably I was only in office two weeks was a meeting with. Joey and the surrounding mayors and parish presidents about thinking regional, regionalized, regionalized thinking. And I had heard the buzzword before, but never really seen anybody try to put it into practice. And um, he's to this day still talks about, you know, I hear it often. He would rather his kids live in Roe Bridge in New Iberia or Morgan City than he would in Austin or Los Angeles or Atlanta. Mm-hmm. And, and he means that. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing that I've seen him do is, is uh, another initiative was the, the Fiber to Home I- Initiative. Uh, he's competitive with, with, I remember the big boys trying to kick him out the room. <laughs> him and, uh, Terry Yuval, who's a native of St. Martin Parish, he, they were trying to say, you know, you can't do what you want to do. And, uh, my, I got a, I got a letter in the mail last week saying Cox Communications, I'm not picking on them. Their, their, their bill's going to go up and he's right there competitive with them. And I got to tip my hat to him because, but I got to tell you one funny story about that. Uh, I remember tell me first. <laughs> when, when, <laughs> when this whole, when this whole thing came out, uh, the newspaper came out and I think the headlines were, uh, Joey, De, Joey Durrell uh, endorses the Fiber to the Home initiative. And I get this call from this lady. It says, well, I didn't get a call. I saw her at a council and agent luncheon. And she says, look, I picked up the paper yesterday, and I saw that the parish president and, and mayor of Lafayette is, is uh, pushing this Fiber to the Home initiative. And she said, I just want you to know I'm not very regular, so if you can figure out how you're going to do that, uh-huh. I'll, 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 I would support that as well. No. So, yeah. Uh, that really? sounds like, yes, really. No, no, no. no. That yeah. sounds, Come on. That, that's a Freddie Mills joke. No, it's not. That, that happened to me. That's a Freddie Mills joke. <laughs> that happened to me. Freddie Yeah, he sold to me. He told the woman to call. Was that Tom Peels who yeah, called Yeah, it was you? Tom Peels who Pils. called me. <laughs> and just a couple other things. Uh, the fact that he had the vision for this, this horse farm project, you know, in my parish, we got a horse farm in every corner, but and so we have a, we have a lot of green space. But in Lafayette, there's just not that much that exists anymore. Mm-hmm. And when he when I first heard about it, I'm like, where's he going with this? But now that I'm getting a, a mm-hmm. full reality of it, it's really amazing um, that forever there's going to be this beautiful piece of green space mm-hmm. inside such a a vibrant and growing city. I came in on Ambassador Caffrey extension. I had to wait for construction trucks to turn in and out. <laughs> uh, Ambassador Caffrey, um, in extension all the way to Broussard, a lot of construction. Another just a 
cool initiative that he's, he's done. And I think, you know, uh, lastly, I'll say that the thing that I think his legacy will be more so than anything is, else is, to me at least, is him being the husband of Miss Lynn and being a father to Natalie, mm-hmm. Nicole, and Jason. And, um, you know, when I saw uh, Nobody Wants to Go Through a Tragedy like he did with, 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 uh, with the movie theater shooting, it was mm-hmm. terrible. But I saw this man compose himself and, and get on TV and had to do what he had to do to make sure that his city would survive. I could see that he was came from some people that, you know, I didn't know. His, I met his father one time, and I had a 30-second conversation with him. But mm-hmm. I could tell where Joey got it from and his, his, his parents. Oh, Mr. And, Lester. He was the best. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he so he did well Good for man. I mean, Joey's done well for being a pet shop boy, pet shop. original <laughs> pet shop boy. <laughs> I, had well, pet shop I went from a pet shop to a zoo, they say. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of animals you know, in the zoo. Guy, you know, you, you hit on the two big things that I think will be the legacy, fiber to the home and the horse farm, mm-hmm. definitely, mm-hmm. that will have a material and significant impact. In the future. Now, we're going to do what we did when we began uh, a long, long time ago with this show. I think we're going to extend this show just a little bit because we have a little presentation we're going to make to you. Uh, so we're going to take a break for our ID and news, and we'll be back with Lafayette Live. It is coming up now on 807 as we continue with Acadiana's morning news, but with Lafayette Live, with Lafayette City Parish President Joey Durrell, who, of course, joins us in studio. And uh, you, I, I will not bother you at all next week. On Thursday, I, I won't be annoying you or calling you or texting you or Please emailing. do, because I don't expect anybody else to either. <laughs> <laughs> you may be the only one who does, Bernie. <laughs> <laughs> our co-host this morning, Carol Ross, she joins us, of course, in Good studio. Morning. We'd like to bring our general manager, Mike Grimsley, into our conversation this morning, who hates to speak. This man hates to speak on the radio, uh, but he has agreed to come into the room, and I think he has a, a few things he, he wants to share this morning. Mike? Well, thank you, Bernie, and uh, I, I think the funny thing is, is I was listening to you. You covered everything I'd thought about last night and said, well, i got to think of something else to tell, <laughs> tell Joey, but there is a couple things that come to mind that, Maybe or not as apparent to, to everybody. To go back the night I was doing backflips, and I really oh, yeah. was. <laughs> um, but I also told you that night, I said, you know what, Joey? We'll, we will never have a sponsor for this show because then it would not come across as what we wanted, mm-hmm. which full transparency. We don't want any influence one way or the other. We never had a sponsor. But it didn't hit me until really last night when the other side of that is by saying no sponsor, We also said anybody can advertise during that show. Mm -hmm. And I can remember many times over the 12 years that we might have been talking about an issue, (laughs) and that person was advertising during Joey's show. Yes. And Joey never once said, hey, can you push that commercial out, or can you not let it? So so it was was twofold. You know, he never asked for anything special, but he also... And, and took unscreened calls and all that, but never once said, hey, don't let them advertise. Mm-hmm. Man, and that's tough not to, because I know sometimes after these shows, it was, you know. Mm-hmm. It would be a tough probably, time, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. it really did. Not, you know, and there was a lot more I wanted to say, but Bernie, you, you really did cover it, but that's why you do this for a living, and I just listen. <laughs> um, but but the other thing I think about with uh, your legacy, and, and I think Carol's right, and I think, you know, the mayor's right. Everything's just about been said about legacy as far as projects go the horse farm the fiber of the home you know whatever it may be but i'm going to say your legacy to me when i think about everything everybody said and i think about all that we've been through is incredible leadership because you know what it's hard to be a leader it's hard to sit in the studio and say some things you got to say and then know you got to come back the next week and people come get you because we have so-called leaders in this world that make a vote and they never have to own up to it because mm-hmm. everybody forgot because they they don't put themselves out there and you do and I, I i just you know i think that's what america needs i think that's what you know Acadiana needs and and louisiana is that kind of leadership so yeah, joey you, just just thank you so well, much thank you and uh, i really have uh, i've said it before and uh, you know that i think the radio show is one of the best things that we did but um i want to tell you that I can't tell you how much I appreciate you guys. I mean, you know, uh, I, I thought you couldn't get a sponsor, so I'm so glad to hear. <laughs> I'm so glad to hear that you didn't want one, you know, because I was getting very insecure over the last 12 years. But, um, but I, uh, I, I do believe this has been a tremendous service, you know, despite me. Um, and what I mean, really, you know, but I mean, it, it has been a tremendous service because. Uh, we were talking earlier out in the in front, and you know, 
taken as an example, when we signed the contract for the big blue trash cans, mm -hmm. automated garbage waste, and how, how the hurricanes Katrina and Rita contributed to that decision and the complexity of how we got there, uh, I, had, I remember at, a, at that time I started doing, I did a series of town hall meetings. Mm -hmm. And, and that's when I really kind of came to realize that the media wasn't really just malicious. It was just incapable of doing what I could do at a town hall meeting. And what I mean by that is that was a very complex issue. And I can remember doing the town hall meetings and I'd see always, there was always some people in the audience that had their arms crossed, their face was taut, mm -hmm. and I knew, and they had this big old piece of wood sitting on their shoulder. Mm -hmm. And, um, And if it didn't come up, I'd say, look, nobody has brought this up, so I'm going to bring it up. Would anybody like to talk about the garbage contract? And boy, whew, hands would shoot up or whatever. <laughs> and so I would spend the next 30 minutes, 40 minutes, talking about how we, the evolution of getting to that contract. And I said, you know, what I've come to realize is for the electronic media, radio, television, to do this justice would have taken a 30-minute program. Mm -hmm. For the For the print media to do it justice would have taken a page and a half, and they gave it a portion of a column. Mm -hmm. The electronic media gave it a 30-second sound bite, and all they really told you was, not you guys, of course, y'all got it right, but um, <laughs> but what they really told you was, we didn't do it, we didn't go to a bid. Mm -hmm. and, it, and, and it made it sound like, you know, this real complex issue was just a real simple sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And 100%, and I can tell you that 100% of the time, those people that came there with their tight faces and their arms crossed started relaxing, their heads started nodding, Mm -hmm. And at the end of it, they would come up to me every time and say, thank you so much. We never understood any of this that you told us tonight. Mm -hmm. And That's so why this we show, to encourage this people to exact, listen to the show. Yeah, well, this show Mike, has that's given us exactly why we wanted to do it. Right. Because so many times we could even invite people to come and have all the elected officials there. I don't care whether we brought Jimmy Hayes down from Washington <laughs> back in in the 80s or whatever it was. Times have changed time on people's part. Is, is a lot more scarce now. Mm -hmm. right. So I was like, okay, but let's bring it to them so they have an opportunity at 7.30 or whatever to hear. But also with radio versus the others, we can stay as long as we want, like mm -hmm. we did today. We're mm -hmm. going over. Right. So, so it allows, hopefully, our listeners to get more of the story. That's the whole idea behind it. Don't live off of headlines or sound bites. Mm -hmm. Let's try and get the whole story right. because look how many minds you do change. Yeah. When you can tell the whole story, and some, you know, well, you may not change their mind, it, but at least but at they least might they accept understand. it. And you know, yeah. and, and what I've also liked about it is because I've heard as much um, from a complimentary standpoint of people saying, "Man, I love listening to your show." From people in surrounding parishes, and I, I, I've always felt that we needed to try to make even our issues uh, explain it. It's it's basically explaining government. It's not just that ditch or that road or that fiber project or whatever else, but it's, it's, it's to try to have people have a better understanding. So when a guy makes a decision and he doesn't have the benefit of a show like this or whatever, maybe his citizens say, well, you know, I heard him talking on KPL the other day. And so, you know, it, it might be more complicated than yeah, what I thought it yeah, was. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. exactly. Well, and the online component of this show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and, and, and the ubiquity and power of the Internet over the past 12 years. You can get a lot more information out, but you all mm -hmm. always refer to your websites, to your podcasts, mm -hmm. to, you know, Facebook page, whatever. Yeah. And people can get it. It and extends hear it. the power oh, no, it's, of I mean, what it does. Think of that evolution. Wow. In 12 years. Absolutely. 13 years ago when I was running for office, somebody came to me and said, you know, there's this thing you can get. And on Election Day, you can actually go to the polling places, find out how many people <laughs> voted, mm -hmm. and you can send an email back to your to your headquarters. I said, really? I said, what is that? He said, it's called a Blackberry. <laughs> I said, really? I said, that's, that's amazing. And so when I came into office, I told Dee, I said, I want every director to have a Blackberry. And we got, we got them all Blackberry so we could mm -hmm. communicate and, and be in touch and whatever. And, um, but there was no real social media mm -hmm. yet 12 mm -hmm. years ago. It was, right. it was a very, that's very, right. maybe very early well, I think, stages I thought of it. it was 2007, but, it, but you're so right in the fact, I remember standing in here sometimes during the show and somebody asked a question. You didn't know the details, but Tom Carroll or yeah, D or here. Chief yeah. Craft or someone would text, you, would or text you real quick yeah. with mm -hmm. an answer. And that's, you yeah. know, technology's mm -hmm. made that available. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. Yeah. No and doubt. so we basically tried to bring it into your home or into your office or into your car like you're having that conversation. Yeah. And all you had to do is pick up your phone and you could be part of the conversation or you could just, you know, listen to it. Um, and, you know, when we go back to leadership, um, even before the tragedy that happened in July, um, when Hurricane Rita happened and just before that, Hurricane Katrina, those were some absolutely 
difficult days. I remember one of the toughest days was when there were so many rumors circulating around town Mm -hmm. that there were gangs of people breaking and entering into homes, robbing people. People were being robbed at gunpoint. These were rumors circulating in our community. And I I said, Joey, please, please come in here. You walked straight into the studio. You sat down. We had a 25-minute conversation, and it completely calmed the entire community. And I think that leadership and the fact that you could stand up with that, and we did what we were able to do at the Cajun Dome, and then were hit again by another storm uh, the size of Rita, I think, is just another example of the things that you have tried to do and tried to show within this administration. So it's just another way to say thank you for yeah, some of the things you. that yeah. have happened. Um, yeah. As we are wrapping up here today, um, we put together a gift basket for you. So um, it's a very heavy gift basket. Um, and so you can kind of glance and see some of the things that are that are in there this morning. Um, I know, it, yeah, you're kind of uh, looking there. So a lot of good, tasty things in there. But there is a point to behind pretty much everything that's in that basket um, and the design of it. Um, if you'll notice, on the left side and on the right side, there is a cup on each side. And inside each cup is tea. Um, It's two for tea and tea for two. Whether it was this weekly radio show, Joey, whether it was the daily grind of being the Lafayette City Parish president, the functions you had to attend, all of the other obligations, it's now time for tea for two. And we hope you enjoy that tea with you, of course, and your lovely, supportive wife, Lynn. It's time for the two of you. Also in that basket... A six-pack of Ragin' Cajun beer <laughs> to celebrate your love of the University of Louisiana at Lafayette, understanding the valuable role that the university plays in our community, in our economy. Uh, so another way to salute you and to say thank you thank for you. that impact on our community. Also included in your basket this morning is a little bottle of champagne. And this one's kind of an easy one. You're to sit back. Enjoy it, drink it up, enjoy a new year that includes you and your family and just you and your family, not the emails and the telephone (laughs) calls and the social media. It's a brute. It's a bottle of brute champagne uh, because let's face it. uh, Brute champagne, no more brutal than any of those council meetings you might have had. (laughs) Any of those calls about the council meetings, any of the discussions about roads, bridges. When are you going to widen this one? What's going to happen? All the fights about the money and the budget, all the things you had to answer as Lafayette City Parish. Also included, there is a bottle of Pinot Noir Mm. and a little bottle of Merlot in there. A little Giardelli chocolate to go along with that wine. Don't drink it all at the same time. That's right. <laughs> that would be a hazard. That's for you and Lynn while you can use uh, the, the cheese and, and, and the two wines together. Because let's face it, there was an awful lot of whining by people mm. in our community. Sometimes we all whined. Other people would whine. But now you don't have to listen to any more of that wine. <laughs> the slogan on the hot sauce. There are ten different bottles of hot sauce in there. Well, the we- slogan says... Can you handle the heat, Joey? Can you handle the heat? Well, they're numbered 1 to 10. 1 is the first degree burn. It's the mean green chili. Number 10 is the 10th degree burn that they call the hot Cajun habanero sauce. Well, my friend, you have definitely handled the heat in this community. Some of the issues were hot. They were boiling hot. They were sizzling. And you thought maybe body parts might fall off. (laughs) So I want you to do that because you know what? You always knew how to keep your cool. And for that, we salute you. The beer symbolizes, or the bear that I have in there, it, you can't see it, he's kind of hidden, he's sort of watching over my beer there. Oh, I'm sorry, that's your beer. The bear <laughs> symbolizes bravery, courage, leadership, tenacity for the fight for the things that you believed in for the Lafayette community. You stood tall on issues that perhaps many people didn't find popular, maybe they didn't agree with it, but in your heart you knew that was the right thing to do. So you did it for Lafayette and for the unincorporated areas and the surrounding areas. For that, we salute you. We're coming to the end now. The binoculars. I don't know if you can see that there's a set of binoculars in there, Mr. Mr. Joey Dorrell. The binoculars are for you to use to keep a close eye on the workings of local government. Because we need you. We need all of you. You can use them 
to look into issues, to delve into issues, get up close and personal, look in on people, check them out, see what they're doing. And we hope to hear what you have to say in the future about what's going on. If I call you and you don't answer, though, I'll be okay with it. And finally, all the way in the back, and you can't hardly see it, it's hidden. It's a box of chocolates. The decoration on it, a bunch of hearts. They're red chocolate hearts, and red is the color of passion. You have that passion for your family. You have that passion for your community. Red is also the color of blood, which along with your sweat and tears, you shed for this community in the form of public service as our Lafayette City Parish president. And finally, red is the color of one's heart. And while we say goodbye to you today, our friend, it's really not a goodbye, but a salute and a thank you. I thank you for your service. I thank you for your time. I thank you for everything that you gave up for this show. I thank you for taking all the calls that came in from people to this radio station. And I thank you for your friendship to all of us here. Because even though we're parting today, you, Mr. Joey Durrell, will forever be in our hearts. Thank you. Thank you. We thought we'd end it with a little champagne. <laughs> well, we got we got the right people here. We got Carly in here and Sidra and Bobby. Um, you know, one of the things I am uh, really most proud of is the team of people we put together. You know, I really um, I can't begin to tell you how how appreciative I am of of these ladies and of Bobby and um, working with God. But you know, I, I, even Mike is a is a is the manager, the boss, um, you know, one of the things that I think you're often measured by is the turnover. Mm-hmm. And we haven't had a lot of turnover, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm real proud of the fact that I think it, it goes to the, the level of teamwork that we had and the, the, um, the atmosphere that we had. And, uh, but, you know, I, I, I am more embarrassed sometimes by, Getting credit for things that they did. <laughs> and, um, but I know it, it goes with the territory, but, um, very, very proud of the people I got to work with. And I, I've come to learn a lot about government and, uh, and the, the fun we have criticizing government. <laughs> and we can make government a lot more, a lot more efficient, <laughs> but we choose not to. And that's, that's a decision of the people. And, um, because efficiency in government is be running it more like a business, which would mean a cigar smoke filled room. <laughs> and, um, you know, and that's not what we want. We want, we want, we want that it out there. We, we want the transparency it. and, um, uh, and a lot of other things that we could do. You know, a lot of things that government gets blamed for for being so slow. It's almost always slow because you're having to deal with private sector issues like acquiring land and right of ways and whatever else. And there's that old sticky thing called property rights you got to deal with. And, um, you know, so it, it, the, the, the majority of people that I've had the privilege of working with, I have been so appreciative that people like you guys in the private sector didn't steal them away because they would be awesome, awesome for the private sector. Mm-hmm. But they, people like Carly and Sidra, Bobby have a passion for what they do. And, um, and that's contagious, you know, so, um, Thank you all. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it, it has been an eye-opening experience for me for 12 years. Well, we appreciate it. It has been a total blast. And speaking of a total blast, I think we'll have a little champagne, a little right. spumante, you know, kind of fun and entertaining to end this celebration. And then hopefully the police department's not <laughs> listening. So, you know. We also have some delicious sparkling cider. So we Ooh. shall do this oh, okay. as a toast for you. And Bobby is working on getting that champagne open. It's it's not oh, there. Oh, it Bobby. is. <laughs> All right. So we shall My toast you. <laughs> well, I want to thank Guy. Guy brought a couple of gifts too. I want to thank Guy for that. Thank you, Guy, yeah. for doing that. Appreciate it. So yeah, if everybody will quickly grab a glass, we shall give our final salute. And we just want to let people know that Lafayette Live continues in the future in 2016. It will be on Wednesdays. It will be at 6.38 in the morning, and we shall rotate our council members who have graciously agreed 
uh, to take part in sharing with the community their thoughts and why they vote on an issue a particular way. And we will get everyone to really be a part of the discussion as well. To Joey Durrell, we thank you, sir. We salute you. Thank you for your commitments to our community and your contributions to Lafayette City Parish Government and for your leadership. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. And I want to propose another toast to Miss Lynn and the family. Absolutely. Because I want to tell you, having been in that position, it is always harder on the family to see their loved one being beaten up and I've done my share of that, I admit. <laughs> you just did it a few minutes ago. We've no, had our differences. Uh, and, but I will tell you this, always with respect but for each other's opinions and, and never with acrimony or anything like that. But we've shared some vigorous philosophical differences. But I will tell you, the wife and the family always, always have it the hardest. So here's to you, Miss Wynn, and all you yep. kids. Yep, we here's appreciate you, you all. Definitely. Thank and you, thank my you. final toast on behalf of all the, the parish presidents and mayors who are in the surrounding area, we all get in this business just hoping to make it better than when we took it. And Joey's proved that uh, he's done his share to make it better than when he took it. I'm not saying it was bad when he took it, but it, it's better than when he took mm-hmm. it. So hats off to you, my friend. Here, here, oh, sir. True public guy. service. Thank you, guy. Thank you, sir. And one last toast. Okay. To the people of Lafayette. Absolutely. And the surrounding areas. The best. But they honored me 12 years ago. Mm-hmm. And I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Lafayette Live with Lafayette City Parish President Joey Durrell. Bernie and I will be back and slightly tipsy, but <laughs> <laughs> Lafayette Live for Thursday, December the 31st of 2015 in the books. We've got a look at news and more conversation on the way.